I just want to be the hardest person alive. I want to be fe feared like that. That's what I want. And, and I want people to look at me and say, not say, there's Darren, he, he's a top UFC fighter, or he's one of the UFC fighters. I want people to look and say, he's a f***ing animal, he's the best UFC fighter in the world. That's what I want people to say eventually. On March 16th, the UFC returns to the O2 Arena in London. We have two welterweights top in the build. We have Darren Till, the gorilla from Liverpool, England, taking on perennial contender Jorge Masvidal. This is going to be absolute fireworks. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Dan Hardy, and this is UFC Face Off. Let's get started, guys. So tell me how this matchup came about. You had a few opponents offered to you. Yeah, uh, the UFC, they wanted the main event in London to me against someone. They, that's what they wanted. And they offered me like three or four names, and obviously I said yes to all of them. The main, the main name at the top of the list was Colby, but that he was pushing for the title fight and, and, and Usman was there for the title shot as well. So that was sort of like them two in the mix with Woodley. And I had just come off the loss to Woodley, so it made sense for one of them to fight for the title. So Colby still thought that he deserved the title, which he right, rightfully did. And so did Usman. So it was a pick of the mix between them two. Usman got it. So I said, well, what about Colby then? And Colby still felt like he needed to be next. His next fight needed to be a title shot. So that fight went out the window. And then a few more fights got offered and they all said no. And Masvidal caught me out on Twitter and I seen it. And straight away, I got to the gym that night. And one of the guys from the UFC had called, calling me coach and said, what does Till think? And I said, yeah. So basically the fight got me because of Masvidal, no one else. So why did the call out come then? Well, I was having trouble getting an opponent. I saw Till was having trouble getting an opponent. It's a no-brainer, you know? Let's fight. And a couple of fights that they were offering me were like weak sauce. I wasn't, I don't want these, uh, I'm at a different stage in my career where I want the toughest, best fights I can get or I don't want them, you know? I don't want to fight Mickey Mouse or Joe Blow. I want the best fights. And uh, when I heard he doesn't have an opponent, I'm like, this is perfect, man. It's the highest ranked guy I could scrap against. Doesn't matter where it's at, if it's in his backyard or in Saturn, I'll go there and scrap, you know? Uh, and what are your thoughts on Darren as an opponent? I mean, you, you, you must have watched his fights. You, you yeah, saw yeah, his, I his, started, his world title. I started watching him after uh, the Cowboy fight, and he scraps, man. He comes to fight. And that's what I come to do is fight. He's not trying to hug my leg, try and hunt me or point fight, you know? He's a scrapper. I can tell he's, his, his way, how he is, he doesn't really have an ego. He's not trying to prove it, and he just wants to fight, just like me. I just want to fight. I love to fight, you know? And uh, a lot of guys do it for the wrong reasons. I think they do it for that camera right there. They just want to be on TV. Some people actually like to fight. You know what I'm talking about. You like to fight, you know? So when these fights get made, I get more excited. I maybe wake up a little bit early and run a little harder and things like that, you know? So I like to feel alive and this makes me feel alive. Was that frustrating for you to not be able to find an opponent? I mean, you, you want to stay right at the top of this division and get back to a title shot, I would imagine. So, you know, the guys that you were calling out were people that were going to set you up for that. Do you feel like you've got that in Masvidal? Even though his ranking might have dropped a bit. Like, beforehand, I didn't think about rankings, but then I think that if I'm just coming off a title shot and I, and, and, and I lost in a way that I didn't, I would have rather went five rounds and, 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 and lost that way, but I lost in, in a bad way, in my opinion. So I do feel like, yeah, one more fight and I can get back for the title shot. And coming off that title fight, I mean, wh where was your head at after that? What were you, what were you feeling about your performance? What did you think the rest of the division thought of you after that it fight? Was it was a shitty performance. So to be honest, I was embarrassed by it. it my, my friends over there, they were over with me in Vegas and even they said the training was inhumane, what I was doing, it was, with Colin. I was so unbelievably prepared and fit for that fight. Like, you know, everyone knew I had weight problems and my weight was just unbelievable and, and everything about it. And then, cause I was, I was so confident and I knew Woodley was so scared of me. I felt like I just had to fight one. So I've done a few different things that I wouldn't usually do for the fight. And, and it cost me like dearly. And, and I didn't even get to throw a punch. So this is all business then, this fight? I want to knock Mads with that out, I do. Let's do it, man. Let's so what, scrap. So what's your thought towards that then? How that's you... definitely not happening, but I like that that's spirit, you know? Is it's two guys that have a will, who's one of us is wrong. 
obviously I feel the same. I feel him knock his head off his shoulders. You know, and he feels some way too. So it's perfect. That's what a fight is. You know, we, we have a disagreement here. He thinks I, he's better. I think I'm better. We're going to find out March 16th. So what's going to pay off more? Is it going to be your experience or is it going to be the, the size and the youth of, uh, of, of Darren? Well, like you said, the size might not help him out too much because he cuts a lot of weight. You know, I used to do that at 55. I was a big 55er and it would slow me down a little bit. And it's also in the back of your mind, like, did I cut too much water? Am I going to have the same gas tank I did when I was at my regular weight, you know? Yeah. So I don't think the size matters too much. So is there an additional pressure for you to, that, to, to then make weight no, on that day? Because or? I put pressure on myself last time because I missed weight for the Wonder Boy fight and, and that was my own problem. And, and then for the Woodley fight, I just put so much pressure on myself. I, I wasn't really worried about Woodley. I was worried about making weight. And, and now that, I've had a taste of... I've always gone through life like this. Like, I just want to fight. I'm young and I'm learning. And for the Woodley fight, I learned that proper nutrition, getting down to the weight properly. You know, like I used to just cut weight in saunas, like just it, I'll cut, I'll cut my weight in the sauna. And, and, and as you get older and you mature, your mentality changes a bit. Was, was there a thought after the fight had happened that the, the focus on the weight may have made a difference to the performance? Yeah. I don't think cutting the weight was, was the problem. I think it was my mentality. Like, like, I was just letting all these people get into my head about weight and it was just me off. Every interview, every person coming up to me asking me about weight and I just, I was, sending myself insane about it because I am a professional and fighting is the only thing I've got. So when something like that happens, yeah, I'm not going to sit here and say no because I'm tough-minded or whatever. Yeah, it got to me. But that won't happen again. And, and now that everyone's happy that I've had a defeat, all I'm scared about to wait, it's, it's done now. I've had my defeat. I'm more fired up than ever. I really am. Let's get down to the serious conversation then. Before the title fight, and all of the other fighters on the roster heard you say this, you, they said that you're the best world to weight in the world, the best fighter in the world. Where does that opinion of yourself stand now? Because I believe in myself so much. And if I don't, if I don't believe in myself, I know that no one else will on this world. And, and ever since I stepped foot in the ring when I was 13, I believed, even when I was in school, I just wanted to be the hardest kid in school. And, and, and it's just, I don't know what it is with me. It, it, you know, it might be the animal inside or whatever, but I I don't want to be like the best in, in computers or anything. I just want to be the hardest person alive. I want to be fe feared like that. That's what I want. And, and I want people to look at me and say, not say, there's Darren, he, he's a top UFC fighter or he's one of the UFC fighters. I want people to look and say, he's an animal. He's the best UFC fighter in the world. That's what I want people to say eventually. And how does that make you feel hearing someone say that? Particularly a guy that you're going to be fighting. Where do you where do you rank him against the other welterweights in the division? Oh, definitely he's in the top five. You know, he's got a lot of pop in the left hand. He's got good footwork. He knows how to get out of trouble, get in him in his own little space. So he's definitely a threat. But man, I've been doing this for a long time. I've heard people say the same thing. You know, I say the same thing. You got to believe in yourself first before anybody will invest in you. Why would anybody invest in you if you don't think you're the world's greatest, you know? So uh, it's, it's just words I've heard before. You know? When you come together, how difficult is it going to be to stick to a game plan? Um, I just want to knock my ball out in 30 seconds. So, so, the, so that's, there's that's no, the that is plan. the game plan? The Wonder Boy fight was different because You'd have to calculate him because I'm not taking anything away from him, but he runs away. He runs away and I had to chase him, but I also had to be careful of spinning kicks and, and stuff like that because if the heel at that speed hits you in the chin, it doesn't matter how hard your chin is, you're going to sleep. So I had to be careful. So it was like a, a stalemate of a fight. I definitely think I edged it, you know, going into the fifth round and knocked him down, could have finished him nearly. But then Masvidal's not on the way, and Masvidal likes to fight, and he, so I do. So I am coming forward, I'm not taking no back steps, and I'm going to be swinging everything I've got, every elbow, to try and take his head clean off. I am. You, you watched the, the five rounds against Wonderboy. What were your thoughts about that, that performance? 
Oh, that was tough to watch, man. And Wonder Boy's just... In what, in what ways was it tough to watch? Actually, it wasn't a lot of action. Just Wonder Boy can do that, you know? He just slowed down the pace. And, and you found that yourself when you fought him as well? Yeah, you know, like, the distance was, like, way off, you know? And uh, still props to him. I don't want to take nothing from Wonder Boy because he does his job, but it's just, uh, it's tough, you know? Mm. We also have another common opponent, Cowboy. You know, so um, I, I look at those fights and see what he does, but uh, he's a southpaw anyways. I'm a right-handed guy, so our, our strategies going into the fight show is going to be a little different. You know? Yeah. But the, the intensity that Darren started the Cowboy fight with, I mean, it, it's fair to say it took Cowboy by surprise. I don't think he was expecting that kind of that kind of aggression early on. And Darren said he's coming to knock you out in the first round. Does that make it easier for you, knowing that, uh, that you've got an aggressive opponent in front of you? I like the fight. You know? I can fight going backwards. I can fight going forward. I don't really care what the opponents do as long as they come to fight, usually, you know. With a guy like Wonderboy, you have to do a lot of thinking, a lot of you faint and he's gone already. It's almost like a track. Man. You know, you do this, he's gone, and then he's in, and then he's gone again, you know. I'm hoping Darren, like he said, he's going to knock me out, so we're going to have to do that, you know, unless he's got, like, Jedi mind tricks. We've got to stand kind of close, you know. And that means I could hit him as well, so it's a fight. I love it, you know. And when did Darren come onto your radar? When were you aware of him as a potential contender in the division? When he fought Cowboy. Definitely. The Cowboy win, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely, yeah. And were you surprised that went down as quickly as it did? Uh, yeah, because I didn't know who Darren was. I knew who Cowboy was, you know? I knew Cowboy maybe wasn't the same after the fight with me confidence-wise or something. So uh, when I first heard about it, I didn't get to see the fight live. I'm like, oh, Cowboy got knocked out in the first round. Oh, Let me check the dude out. I checked him out, I was like, ah, oh, he moves his feet well, throws some good feints, you know, he might be a problem in the future. And then he, he stringed along a couple wins and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But when you say it might be a problem in the future, that's quite exciting for you because you, you want the challenge, you want to fight. Oh, definitely, definitely, you know. There's a lot of guys that you see up and coming and you just, I'm like, man, this guy, 20 years from now, will still be garbage. I won't want to fight this guy. And there's some guys you look at him and go, man, this guy in the future is going to be a good fight, you know, he's going to be a good fighter. I'd like to take his head off, you know. Mm -hmm. so, Maybe is this the right time to fight Darren before he continues to improve? It's the best time. Yeah. I think he's damn near the best right now, especially coming off the loss. Like he said, his mind changes up, you know. A little bit of pressure maybe falls off you as well. I never worry about my opponents. I don't care what mindset Darren's in or what type of shape he's in. I worry about me. It's the only thing I worry about, you know. When did uh, Masvidal come onto your, uh, onto your radar? When he was doing backyard fights. Right. Was that what it is? And, and, yeah. What was interesting about that for you? Because I, I didn't get my backyard fights filmed, but I've had a lot of street <laughs> fights. And as I say, it's a bit different when you're fighting on the street because you don't have any time to think about it. It just happens and you've had a fight. In the cage, in the octagon, you have 10 weeks to think about. I've got seven weeks now to think about Masvidal and what he wants to do to me and what I want to do to him. So, you know, every night, go to bed, think about him, wake up, think about him because he's trying to take what I'm trying to wait for, and oh, that's just how it is. I'm, I'm a fighter. I, I like fighting. Like, I love it when I see that I've hurt someone. People stay, you know, there's people who are, I love hurting people for a living, so that's me in a nutshell. There's a lot to be gained in this, in this fight for both of you, and also a lot to be lost. You know, you can lose a lot of ground in this fight, picking up another loss. So, out of the two of you, I'll put this to you first, Darren, out of the two of you, who, who's got more to gain in this fight? Yeah. I think Masvidal because he's been an actor and I've just come up for a world title fight and I'm like the guy right now in the division who everyone wants to fight and that's the truth because everyone mentions my name, you know what I mean? And, and so many of them were happy when I got beat because I am loud, cocky, confident and I'll never change. So I think Masvidal's got more to gain, I really do. And what about yourself? We're just based off the ranking, my rankings dropped been inactive for a while. And is there any other motivating factor other than the rankings to take this fight? I mean, you, you know, you, you're traveling across the world, you, you're facing Darren in London. The majority of the crowd are going to be behind him. D does that make a difference to you? Is you that sure a preferred? About that? Well, it's going to be divided. Do you think? What, why would the crowd be divided? Do you, nah, do you think you're nah, a fan I'm, favorite over I'm, here? I'm sure to you, man. <laughs> the, a lot of them will know who I am. Obviously, they're not going to be cheering for me, but they'll know who I am. You know? Yeah. And, and do you think that they, they feel like you're a a real threat to Darren and to his potential second title run? It depends if they're brainwashed or not, you know? If, if people are just looking at a fight and then they're like, they know anybody can win, you know? Anything could happen. Um, I don't care who considers me a threat or not. 
I'm I'm a threat. I know that. You know, I'm more than a threat. I'm a, I'm a real life problem. You know, once that cage closes. Mm. And what's your preparation been like for this fight so far? Have you done some research? Have you watched Darren? Have you got an idea of how you're going to approach this? Could care less what Darren's doing. If he's running every day, or if he's lifting heavy, that's him. I'm going to do me. I'm going to watch tapes on me. I'm going to run my miles. I'm going to swim. I'm going to do what I got to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and is that the same for you? Or do, yeah. do you let your coaches do the, do the yeah, watching? Yeah. I just let Colin do everything, mate. I don't watch tapes. I'm not, I'm not worried. Fighting, might as well, I'm not worried about that because I like fighting. You, you're standing behind the curtain right before you walk out. The Oto Arena's buzzing. Jo uh, Jorge's already made his way to the Oxygen. He's standing there waiting for you. What's that emotion? Don't get me excited, Dan. Well, well I, want you to, I want you to get excited because I want to know what that emotion is like because it's difficult to connect with that when you're not in that space. As I said, it's, it's, it's a lot of emotion. It's, I get a lot of nerves. I get scared. I like being scared. It's weird because for the Woody fight, I wasn't really that scared. I was too overly confident and that's a mistake on my part and that's me trying to grow as a fighter but every fight I'm scared and, and, I'm, and I'm not scared about getting hit or anything like that I'm just scared of what could be what could happen so and is and is is Jorge the right opponent to get you in that frame of mind do, do you do you respect his game do you, do you think is he a dangerous opponent is there a potential he's going to catch you and knock you out is that realistic yeah but I think Anyone right now in the UFC, all divisions is a threat. I truly do respect every fighter, but when it's fighting me, I'm different. Like, I'm, I'm, I just couldn't really give a f who the other guy is. It doesn't matter who you put in front of me, I'm going to come to fight. I will come to fight. I won't come to do anything else. Like, it's funny because people don't really see me wrestling a lot and, and, that, and I am really good. I don't want to wrestle. I want to punch a hole straight through your face. So we leave all that to the people. I want to fight, I want blood. Does that make it easier for you when you know you've got an opponent that's just, he's just coming for business? There's no, there's no unnecessary emotion in it. He's, he's there to get his victory and nothing else. I think it's, it's cool, you know, that uh that we're going to scrap, that we know our intentions. I want to knee him in, in the nose and he wants to take my head off, but there's no problems outside of that. Like a lot of these uh, these new agers that are coming up, they just want to talk crap, you know, they just want to talk crap. But then when they see you or they see me, they want to ask for a picture or something like that. Like, nah, well, that's not cool, you know. If, we're, if we got problems, we handle it right now. And if we don't got problems and we don't got problems and, and we fight on March 16th and have fun and after shake hands and that's it, it's over, you know? So that's what I do like about him that I think he called me out like a long time ago yeah, before. For me, for, for Liverpool. Yeah, you called me out like a long time ago and it was just, yo, you want to fight? Yeah, let's f***ing do it, you know, why not? You know, it doesn't have to be your mom's oh, and your dad's and it, like, why? It's so petty and so like grade school, you know? We're, we're already going to fight. We don't have to do all that, you know? And that's something that just uh, doesn't bother me, but it's just stupid, man, you know? And thank God he doesn't do it. He just wants to fight. We're going to put on the show, you know? Do it together. <laughs> do it together. Because you know it's not going to work on, on, on Jorge. Is that why? The thing is, if it was Ben there now, then I'd be jumping across the table, probably. Is that right? It's because he wants to fight me. And mm. I know he wants to. He doesn't just want to respect me or my game. He just wants to talk crazy and and and. and disrespect my level of fighting just because he's such an amazing wrestler. So it's different. It's that to me is, is actual like fight talk. Like he wants a fight right now. Mm. It's Maserati's different. So. But that's that's quite that's quite unusual. And that's a difficult thing for a lot of people, a lot of fans to understand that don't actually compete is that you guys, I mean, this is the first time you've sat across the table from each other. We've got a date, March 16th, you guys are going to face off. You're going to fight. You're going to try and knock each other out. You're both confident that you're going to win. Very confident. But one of you is going to lose. So how, how do you reconcile those feelings? How do you look across the table from the man that you're going to fight and, know, and think, I've got to beat this man because otherwise he's going to take everything I'm working for away from me? I mean, it's not personal. You know, I don't wish this guy bad, you know, um, but I want to win. I got kids. I got to feed them, man. I mean, you're telling me I'm going to get a paycheck for fighting this guy? Let's do it. You know, if I got to do it twice in the night, sign me up. There's no hard feelings in it, you know? If uh, if I win or lose, it's just a fight, man. I got to do what I wanted to do and I got paid in the process. You know, like he was saying, mentioning Ben, that guy's like a tool, you know? 
huge tool. I would, this conversation wouldn't be the same if it was Benson and Cross. If we start talking to each other from here to the final, he's like, man, Masvidal ain't got no job, weak footwork. That's different to me, you know, we're just competitive talking, but when guys are insulting your character, or talking about family, friends, things like that, that bothers me a little bit. It's just immaturity and insecurity, you know? I just know that Masvidal is a game person. I know, I know that. If I didn't think that, I'd say it, but I know he is, so I can't say anything else. So I can't sit here and lie to myself or lie to the people watching and say, nah, he's a p or that. I know he's game, so what, what more can I say? And I think it's fair to say that when, when you see Darren in interviews and when you sit across him in person, he, he's quite different. A lot of time in interviews, especially around fight time, he's a bit louder and more flamboyant. Has your opinion changed that Darren, is he what you expected to be seeing in front of you right now? Yeah, I mean, I saw him uh, before the Cowboy fight, like how they interacted with each other, you know, and then after. And then uh, I don't remember when it was that he called me out, but I just knew I was like, ah, he's not a punk. He's He just wants to, to scrap, you know? Kind of reminds me of myself a little bit. When I'm young, I, I'm, I'm confident always in myself, and you got to be, you know? People mistake that cockiness for a firm belief in yourself, you know? So I never thought he was like a cocky dude or nothing like that. I just thought, young, confident fighter, you know? Mm. Same dude now. I saw him downstairs, there was no cameras around nothing. He didn't come in here with no bad vibes and I just shook hands, all right, what's up, what's up? Boom, that's it, you know? We're gonna scrap. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna get to know each other on a whole other level that people don't get to know each other. We don't gotta do all that extra bull you know? Yeah. So the March 16th date's set. If we can just for a moment look past that, what does the next 18 months look like for you? Uh, I, I just can't really tell you because I can't look past him. I've, I've got to... I know, I'm, I know how much it hurts to get beat and I knew that before my last fight. So I've been beat before, but that hurts a lot more because I was so close to getting what I wanted and I didn't get it. You know, I've gained a lot of popularity just by being me. I, I don't sit up in the morning thinking, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say that. I say what comes to mind. And I know I've been on camera before saying about how I don't care about certain things when, 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 when fights are around. And that same mentality still stands. I don't really care about anything else now, apart from beating Masvidal. How can I think about six months down the line that I'm, I'm going to be in Dubai or somewhere or Vegas, or whatever? I need to think about March 16th given everything I've got, everything, more than I've ever given before in my whole entire life. I've had more than 100 fights, all in all, and, and, and I've got to give everything to beat Masvidal. I've got to do everything in my power. Some opponents, like I said, like the Mickey Mouse ones, they don't really get you excited, you know. Some opponents do get you excited when you're thinking about them every minute. And, and that's what says that hour, where you, th where you just, you, you wake up before your alarm goes off, you know. Mm -hmm. that's, those are the fights that I look for. So uh, there's some guys that I don't, man, maybe I didn't even train for, you know? There's some guys that I will be training for, you know, as much as I can every day, you know? I won't say no names, but there's some guys that, you know, you can get motivated for. Yeah, yeah. And what's your prediction for the fight? My hand is raised. If everything goes well, the fight ends quick. And if not, it's five rounds and I got, I got to dance more. I love dancing, so it, you know? What's your prediction? I won't be satisfied if it goes past the first round. I like that. He has standards. <laughs> this is going to be a good fight. My goodness. We've got two fighters here, ladies and gentlemen. There's no nonsense, no trash talking, none of that. These two guys are going to face off in the Oto Arena on March 16th. It's going to be absolute fireworks. Make sure you tune in to BT Sport if you're not there live.